Welcome to Oracle TV. I'm Shauna Adamick, Executive Director of Oracle Health Foundation and your Oracle TV correspondent for the day. I'm coming to you live from HIMSS Global Health Conference in Orlando, Florida, and it's been a busy week. I've got some great interviews lined up for you, interviews that'll provide insights into everything Oracle Health that's happening right here at HIMSS. Those discussions will be focused on our comprehensive health platform, which include our open ecosystem for innovations and Oracle health, scalability, and agility to meet our customers where they are. Those conversations will be had with many of our Oracle Health leaders as well as our customers in the industry. I'm excited to sit down and have those conversations and I'm excited to engage with you. So engage with us wherever you're watching from, whatever platform it might be on. Get in the comments and share with us the location in the world where you're watching us from and also what you're excited to hear about today. We're excited to hear from you. So let's get started. But before we do, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and we're going to dive into that first discussion. A major contributor to physician burnout is the mountain of required regulatory, financial, and clinical documentation. Physicians like you spend a significant amount of time sifting through information and entering patient notes. As you know, this interrupts focus on the patient, creating disconnected, unsatisfactory patient experiences and impacting outcomes. And that's why we built the Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant. This multimodal digital assistant combines conversational, clinical, dictation, and action assistance capabilities into a single time-saving experience. It helps physicians like you reduce the overall time spent on documentation and frees up time to focus on patients. Let's say you need a quick recall of the patient you are about to see. Instead of preparing for a patient visit by searching through charts, you can use voice commands in the digital assistant to ask for the patient's trend and blood pressures. Hey Oracle, what is Julie's blood pressure history? It can either read those back to you. Here you go, Julie Smith, 55 years old. Or display them on your device to get you reoriented quickly. Immediately after capturing and analyzing a conversation between you and your patient, the digital assistant can automatically generate a structured note for you. But it gets better. The digital assistant is tightly integrated with the Oracle electronic health records. So that note can also include information pulled from the patient's documented history. And finally, you can edit the generated note using Oracle's integrated voice recognition software. Add note, patient to avoid ibuprofen. Before you submit it. The digital assistant will also propose actions that AI has inferred from the physician-patient conversation. For example, if you tell the patient you're going to schedule a follow-up next Tuesday, Digital Assistant will present that proposed action at the end of the visit for you to adjust and accept in the system. Let Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant take care of those pesky manual tasks throughout your day, so you can focus on providing high-quality care for your patients. Well, welcome back to Oracle TV. I am so excited to be sitting here with our first guest, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Oracle Health and Life Sciences, Seema Verma. Seema, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. My pleasure, it's great to be here. Oh, it's absolutely exciting to sit down and talk with you more about this comprehensive health platform that we have. So as the former Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Administrator, and now the leader of, you know, General Manager of Oracle Health, how do you see the future healthcare going? Well, I couldn't be more excited about our future. I think technology is really going to change uh, the way we look at healthcare and solve a lot of the problems we had. You know, there's a lot of amazing things going on in healthcare. Um, we've got wonderful doctors and providers at the front lines. We have made amazing innovation, new treatments and therapies. But, you know, from where I sat in my previous government role, we also saw all of the problems, um, whether it was the high cost of health care, people having trouble accessing the system, we're spending a lot of money on administrative costs. And quite frankly, we've had issues with technology. I think, you know, what we're hearing in the last few days is even just issues around cybersecurity. And so, you know, we have a lot of problems to solve as well in healthcare. 
So there's a, you know, this outlook that we're not just shifting healthcare, we're shaping it, and we have problems to solve as we move forward into the future of healthcare. So as the leader of Oracle Health, you know, you are, you have your eye on both the provider and life sciences. How are those two, what's that interplay like that's going to benefit our customers? Sure. So if we think about some of the problems that we're having in healthcare, one, one that really comes to me in terms of top of mind is the high cost of drugs. And there's a lot of discussion about how we should pay for drugs, but if we really take a second to look back at what is causing that problem, a lot of it is for our pharmaceutical companies is that there's a high cost in terms of those bringing these blockbuster drugs to market. They can spend some 30 years and billions and billions of dollars just to bring a drug to market. A lot of times they're spending money on research and the drug isn't successful. And if we look at that, just sort of that problem and the time it takes in development, there's a lot of opportunities for us to simplify that process and make it easier. Um, there's a lot of drugs that they develop that don't even get a chance to go to clinical trials because we can't find people to participate in the clinical trials. There's a lot of manual work that's involved in that as well. And so I think there's an incredible opportunity for us to bring better technology um, to the whole clinical trials life cycle to make that process go quicker and faster and, it's, and to make it more affordable without sacrificing any quality. And so one of the things that I like to say that we're doing at Oracle is that we're bridging the gap between clinical care and clinical research. Today that's very separate. We've got providers out there that may not be aware of the latest treatments and therapies. Um, we also have individuals out there that would love to participate in a clinical trial and they can't do that because they're not aware of those clinical trials. Um, moreover, the data um, is also extremely important. Pharmaceutical companies can really have a lot of um, discoveries and ideas just looking at what happens when somebody takes X drug or Y drug and what those interactions are so that having access to data is really important in terms of creating the next cycle of new drugs and to really be fueling innovation. That, thank you so much for that. So really this, this connection between the provider and life sciences, it comes with, you know, we're going to be bringing forward better technology, use the word even simplifying, mm -hmm. to, to help that provider and, to, you know, to, to get that out there to improve this future of, of healthcare. You also hit on another term, the, the real world data, mm -hmm. and I've heard you use that as being this critical component of what you just talked about, that bridge between clinical care and clinical research. Can you go into that just a little bit sure. more? I think what we're trying to build at Oracle is a connected ecosystem. Yes. Today, if we look at technology, we have technology that's specific for an electronic health record. We have technology that is specific for a clinical trial. And Oracle is really the only company in the world that sort of sits in the middle of all of this. We start with our military grade cloud infrastructure, and then on top of that, we have all of these different applications across payers, providers, pharmaceutical companies. And Today, they operate very separately, but because Oracle sits in the middle of that, we had the ability to connect all of this together. You know, today in clinical trials, people actually sit there and have to rekey information from their electronic health record into the clinical trial system. We shouldn't have to do that. You can imagine all the time and effort that that takes. It also creates a lot of errors. We can simplify all that. We can just automatically move that data from the EHR into the clinical trial system. So that's going to speed up clinical trials. Also, because we have direct access to the bedside, we can help providers identify patients that may be eligible for clinical trials and connect them with pharmaceutical companies that are trying to bring the next new great discovery to market. Um, and then again, just having all of that real world data. The data is critical. Um, I think there's been a lot of work in the last few years to make data flow more freely and to flow along with yeah. the patient along their journey so things are better. However, I think the challenge now isn't just the data, but meaningful data. To be able to take that data, to deduplicate it, to normalize it, structured, unstructured data, and to make use and meaning of the data, I think, has become the new frontier. And that's really where I think Oracle specializes. We're going to be providing insights to our providers, to our pharmaceutical companies in a way that's never been done before. I'm really excited that uh, at HIMSS this week, we're going to be announcing our health data intelligence platform. Mm. Um, this is an incredible new product. It is taking data from over 2,700 sources of data, and it's bringing 
essentially building these longitudinal health records. And so you can imagine when you have comprehensive data about a patient, and then you're able to, to develop all kinds of insights and applications that sit on top of that, whether it's population health or public health, uh, for a physician, if they're just trying to figure out what needs the patient has, closing care gaps. So once we have comprehensive data, there's many different types of applications that we can build for pharmaceutical companies, for payers, for providers, and for patients. I mean, it's just the ability for a patient to have all their data in one place to be able to understand their health care is very empowering. Love that. It's not just about the data, it's meaningful data. And right. that's the new frontier. I think right. that's pretty incredible. And I love that you also touched on the open ecosystem for innovation. So let's circle back to where we started, the future of healthcare. When you think forward from your own personal perspective of what's this going to look like in five years, in one year, in two years, what makes you optimistic? What makes you excited? Or what are you focused on in the future? Sure. Well, the problems in healthcare. Um, have been going on for a long time. Top of mind, or I would say top of that list is the affordability of healthcare. Our government employers, uh, not only in this country, but across the world are having trouble affording healthcare. And what that means for customers and consumers and patients is that they have trouble accessing healthcare because of its high costs. So we have to address the affordability issue. What's interesting, especially in the United States, is that we're spending almost 25 to 30 percent of our health care dollar just on administrative costs. So there's a real opportunity with better efficiency with technology to solve some of those problems. Um, another issue that's top of mind is workforce. It's a great thing that people are living longer, um, but we don't have the workforce to support the health care needs of our aging population. So again, a very significant problem. And there isn't a magic bullet to that, right? We don't have yeah. the next generation of, of healthcare workforce that's already there. And so again, technology is gonna play a critical role in solving these healthcare challenges. If we can provide better tools for paraprofessionals, um, AI-assisted tools that can help them make treatment recommendations and find insights about that particular patient, we can help um, provide a better workforce because they have better tools to treat patients. So I couldn't be more excited about the future of healthcare because I think for the first time we're going to have better tools and better technology that can address the issues that we have been struggling with for a very long time. And even if we are just taking, making a dent in that high cost of healthcare around administrative costs, and again, that's what I'm excited about with Oracle, because we're sitting in the middle of all of that. Right. No other company has a footprint with payers and providers and with pharmaceutical companies. That ability for us to connect the whole ecosystem and using AI, um, we're going to be able to bring better tools so that we don't need to have a lot of manual labor. Um, so we can reduce costs and we can have providers doing what they wanted to do from the very beginning when they went into healthcare and that's to focus on patients, uh, not having to sit there at the, uh, at, the, at the keyboard. So we're bringing a whole new era, very exciting technology. Uh, the other one that I wanted to mention was our clinical digital assistant. Yes. I couldn't be more excited about this one. This is a tool that essentially is ambient, listening, it is listening to the interaction between the provider and the patient and then generating the doctor's note. And we are having tremendous success with this. The amount of time that it takes doctors to do that documentation is quite considerable and we are drastically reducing that. But moreover, I think we're going to be bringing the joy back to practicing medicine because doctors can focus on their patients, not on all of this paperwork. Yeah. And we're hearing just rave reviews from the doctors. They're saying things like, you know, for the first time in many years, I was actually able to take a lunch break. Mm -hmm. I was able to go home on time and I didn't have to sit and stay up late doing two to three hours of paperwork. And so imagine what that means for the healthcare system when we have doctors that are truly, fa fa truly focused on patient care. I think that the future looks very, very bright um, with all of the technology that's really going to solve some of the problems that we've been struggling with for years. I love that, and I, I think it just hits on it's bringing the human back to health right. and right. being able to really create that provider and patient connection. I mean, I feel, I feel, I was already excited about our future, and I feel yeah. more excited after yeah. sitting here and talking yeah. to you. So thank you so much, Seema, for shedding more light on this comprehensive health platform that we have. You know, it's really, as I, I said earlier, we're not just shifting healthcare. Oracle Health 
is shaping healthcare. Stick with us and we'll be back for more conversations. During COVID-19, one of the things that we've learned is that transferring patients from one system of care to another system of care, data gets lost. In particular, for our long-term care patients who may be visiting our emergency rooms, oftentimes they come unaccompanied by family and only by the emergency medical services personnel. And you're talking about confused patients, patients who might not know their entire medication history and or their allergies. So the Ontario eHub and what it can provide for all our patients in Ontario has been a major driver for the work that we've been doing over the past year. One of our big precepts or concepts is to ensure the safe transitions of our patients from long-term care to acute care and back again. Where Oracle Health has been a huge um, proponent and supporter of us in our journey was actually helping us to come up with a solution that can be leveraged across the entire province of Ontario for all our Oracle Health clients, but as well find it in such a way that it would be both economical and that would enable us to successfully transfer data between long-term care and the acute care facilities. Having an Oracle eHub or an HIE that can readily connect to a variety of systems. So not just an Oracle site to an Oracle site, but Oracle to other vendors just helps us move forward that agenda of interoperability and sharing of data that's really key to ensuring that our patients are safe and that we can create that longitudinal record for our patients instead of them carrying around thick binders or books full of their data. We are putting the data directly in the hands of the clinicians that need it versus just in a repository where it could be viewed. What's very unique about the eHub is that the clinicians have the choice to pull in certain key data elements into the chart and actually make it a part of their integrated workflow versus just seeing data in a different system and then you have to manually type it in. This is truly interoperable data that can be used to serve our patients better at the end of the day. Having the eHub and be able to do that seamless data exchange allows that provider in the emergency room to have access to that real-time data to do things like medication reconciliation. Where it's been a huge benefit in the emergency department, um, our nurses are finding what normally would take 30 plus minutes to do a medication reconciliation is now taking two minutes worth of time. So that's 28 more minutes going back to working with that patient, getting them settled, getting them comfortable in a very unsettling time. Well, I'm honored to be sitting here with our next guest, and that's Dr. Tom Selva, and he is the Chief Medical Information Officer of University of Missouri Healthcare and the Medical Director for the Tiger Institute for Health Innovation. Thank you so much for being here Absolutely. today. It's a pleasure to be here. And can I start off with MIZ? And Z-O-U? Yes. Do it right. That's right. <laughs> I love that, and I'm, I'm thrilled to be having this conversation with you, and I, I think that you know it's an understatement to say that you are passionate about healthcare. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'd love for you to dive in to tell us a little bit more about you, your organization, your pa patient population, anything you want to share with us. Sure. So I, I've been at the University of Missouri for, this will be 35 years this year. My wife and I came there to do our pediatric residency, never intending to stay because you don't. Uh, <laughs> How it always we decided works. that we wanted to live in a college town that had a lot of you know, a lot of advantages for culture uh, and diversity in the population so that our children would grow up with people from around the world, like I did, because I grew up overseas. And so we uh, were fortunate that my wife was offered a job as a private practitioner, and I was uh, chosen to help start what is now our academic pediatric practice, initially with two people, now with 18 people. So I've um, been very fortunate there, and along the way, I always had a passion for IT and was very passionate about how ridiculous this paper record was and how broken it was. And so one way or another got pulled into the development of our own homegrown EMR. I have a lot of interest in user-centered design, user experience, um, so I actually designed the first interface. Uh, and then I was on the team that selected Cerner uh, as our vendor back then in 95, 96. Uh, and then just had the good fortune to move through a lot of leadership positions that uh, eventually landed me as the medical director for outpatient clinics when the Tiger Institute started and Cerner was pushing out their ambulatory product and I took the lead on that and that eventually led to my job as the, the first full-time chief medical information officer for the MU Healthcare system. And that system is unique in that um, I was just explaining this to some friends from Ireland that, that Although we are a very large campus uh, in a city, 
in Missouri, that's sort of a loaded term, right, city, um, 15 miles in any direction, you're on somebody's farm. And so that makes our population very unique. And we take care of essentially the citizens of the entire state of the Missouri uh, outside of the large metro areas. So it's an incredibly um, financially diverse population, educationally diverse, uh, ethnically diverse. Uh, and so it makes us very unique. And, and the other thing that makes us unique, uh, I trained in Mississippi where I thought it was just a Mississippi thing that you'd have a medical center in one city and uh, the School of Biological Sciences in another city and the School of Veterinary Medicine in another city that had to be a Mississippi thing. Turns out that's very common across the country. And coming here to Mizzou, uh, it's, we're very unique and that we're one of a handful of institutions where the School of Medicine and the Academic Medical Center is sitting on a flagship campus with mm. a School of Engineering, School of Nursing, School of Health Related Professions, School of Veterinary Medicine, and a Center for Precision Medicine and Precision Healthcare. Which means when we want to do translational science, it's not a call across the country. It's a walk across Stankowski Field to go visit the, the engineer who's literally a five minute walk from your office. So Absolutely. the ability to have that personal connection with the people that you're trying to solve problems with, is incredibly unique for us. And I, I get a big kick out of that. I think that's great. And thank you for your partnership, our long history of our partnerships that sure. we've had in the future that we're going to experience together. And I love that you pulled out what's unique about your organization and that patient population. I mean, you are surrounded by little these little rural communities. And exactly. like you said, you can you know go out a mile and you'll be on a farm. And I mean, that's that's uh, pretty amazing to think about that and that, that being your patient population. Well, you have to be so proud of your organization because MU Healthcare has earned its third Hems Davies Award. Yeah. How do you feel about that? We're very proud about that. You know, our journey to Davies is a, is a good cautionary tale <laughs> because our first, our first swing at Davies, you know, the Tiger Institute was going strong, thought we have this in the bag and we're just going to go ahead and apply for the Hems Davies Award because we're doing such amazing things. And we actually didn't win. We didn't even get a, a first look. Oh, wow. And you know, that was, that was a sort of a wake up call. And when we when we sort of renewed the, the partnership, one of the stipulations of the renewal was, you're going to win the Davies Award. So I had just been named CMIO, so I sat down with our team of quality experts, physician leadership, and I just threw out this question. I said, if we don't have a story to tell, then we have categorically failed. Yeah. We're doing so many good things, how come we can't tell our story? And what we realized is that one, we had approached it as an IT project, that was wrong. And two, we had a, a, an incredibly long history of doing very well, and then we implemented IT and we did better. That's a different story than we weren't doing great, we brought mm -hmm. IT in and we got a lot better. I said, so I think we have uh, a great story to tell, we just have to learn how to tell it. So we, we won our first Hymns Davies Award, and I remember coming to Hymns and Jonathan French, who you just have to know Jonathan, he's, he's got this great poker face. He, he, he and I didn't know each other that very well at the time. He says, well, you did a great job. And he says, you told some great stories. I said, you know, we have a lot of stories to tell. He goes, really? I said, I think we're coming back. Uh, and so along the way, we have formalized in our institution how we approach improvement in patient care, completely driven by data, looking at quality metrics, uh, with leadership living, uh, driven uh, initiatives. Uh, and so, and we make sure that we record all of that work so that we can continue to improve and not just do a project and walk away. Yeah. So uh, when we got our second Davies Award just two years ago, Jonathan, of course it was all virtual because of COVID, when he was done, he says, and I fully expect you to apply in two years. He goes, you guys have figured this out. And then this year, uh, it's his quote, not mine, but what was so heartwarming was when he was done, he said, we normally come back with a bunch of edits for your stories. We don't have any. Mm. We have nothing to tell you to do better. Um, you have clearly learned how to put data into action. And so anytime somebody asks, what are you doing? I said, we're putting data into action. That's, that's not me, that's Jonathan, that was his, his words. But yeah, we're incredibly proud. Uh, it's teamwork. We have a phenomenal leadership team, a phenomenal enterprise analytics team that really helps us focus on where the problems are and then drill down to what are the drivers for that, that failure to perform yeah. so we can really hone down and make our work really count. I think I'm going to take that 
putting data into action. I love that. And I, Not you know, my quote. <laughs> and, and when you're looking at the Davies Award, it, it, they're looking at 18 months of data. And so to be able to come back and, like you said, wrap a story around that, you have to be able to tell that story of what exactly. that is and tell it in a way that's compelling that makes uh, sense for the future of healthcare and what you're seeing now and what exactly. it can mean for the future. Right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Our team did a phenomenal job. They're a great team. Absolutely. So with all of this recent success that you have felt with MU Healthcare, what do you think you've been most proud about? So that's uh, that's a great question. You know, uh, there's a lot to be proud of. You know, it's easy to say, oh, our Hems davies case studies, but I, I would let's pull the camera back a little bit. And, you know, we have successfully brought on board uh, a sister hospital 30 miles south, uh, uh, completely integrated. Uh, their staff are now our staff. We've never done that before, and we did it without a hitch. Uh, their financials are now our financials. Uh, and on the heels of that, just three months later, we've just opened our children's hospital and birthing center. We, we had a children's hospital across town that was an aging facility. Uh, and, and, and splitting our people across even just three or four miles leads to a lot of duplication. Um, and people don't really get to work together as much as they should. So we wanted to bring that back onto our main campus. That building is now open. Uh, we will be completely moved in by, I believe it's the end of May, probably a little bit into July. Uh, and then we'll have some department staff come over. So our ability to sort of uh, handle that change uh, and do it in a financially and fiscally responsible way when the pressures are incredibly tight. Yeah. Uh, and still pay attention to the fact that we need to relieve the burden on our staff. Uh, I've been very, uh, it's been very heartwarming for me to hear our liter leadership team say literally, we know we don't have all the money to do this, but we've got to invest in reducing the burden on our staff. Yeah. That's something we haven't heard for a long time and uh, it's great. And then. The other thing that's been really exciting is this whole new journey with Oracle. You know, we've had this journey with Cerner, and now Oracle has come in, and, and, and it, it's been fun to be part of helping Oracle learn what does it mean to interact with healthcare, yeah, um, and what does it mean to be in a partnership with an academic healthcare system. Um, we've had our rough spots, but uh, I've, we've had a lot of successes, and I'm looking forward to more of that. Yeah, I'm excited for the future as well. And I have to tell you that you absolutely spoke to my heart when you're saying you opened up the doors of a new children's hospital, you're removing barriers to get children the care that they need. So right. thank you for doing yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think those are some incredible points to be proud on. I mean, you're telling the story, you're looking at your data, you're telling the story now, and, and one that will help with the future. You're expanding, you're you know reducing the burden uh, of your staff, and you're looking towards the future of this partnership with Oracle Health and what we can do together on this comprehensive health platform. Right. That is something to be excited about, something I know I am and everyone else is as well. Well, I, this week has been you know, full of, someone used the term earlier, a buzz of energy of what's gonna come next, that healthcare is right now, the future of healthcare is right now. When you're leaving this week, what are you taking away? What was the highlight for you? Well, you know, uh, AI is everywhere. Uh, and I think that we are, it's clear that we are at an inflection point in healthcare where um, things are about to change, uh, and they're about to change in a very dramatic way. Uh, and I think it, uh, what I enjoyed, I tried to attend as much of the, the sessions I could on AI and machine learning. And HIMSS is unique in that HIMSS tries to avoid the deep dive, right? They try to keep a yeah. high level, and it's good to, to uh, I've enjoyed learning the principles of governance of AI, more in-depth discussions about what's the appropriate application of AI, particularly generative AI. I wear two hats. I'm not only a clinician who takes care of patients directly, but I also teach medical students. So I have to be thinking about, these are the, I like to call them the children of the algorithm, right? And so I need to somehow put into their educational programming that you're gonna encounter a lot of AI in your future. That's a good thing, but you also need to understand how it works because ultimately you bear the responsibility for the decisions that you make. Absolutely. And you can never hand that off to a machine. So this, this whole week's been full of buzz about that. What's the responsible use of AI? How can we get transparency in there? So I'm looking forward to bringing a lot of that learning back. Uh, it's nice to be able to spend just a week uh, of intense learning and not have all your other jobs sort of uh, compete for that time. 
Oh, absolutely. And I love how you put that AI is everywhere and it is. And you know, I'm I'm a optimist and I like to look at everything through that lens. And I hear you say that and it's definitely a cautiously optimistic and also knowing Always, that there's right. a lot Always. of responsibility in that optimism and that outcome and that future. It's an exciting one. Thank you for talking to me about it. Absolutely. Thank you for your partnership and health. And we will be right back with more conversation. I think based on what we've heard about OCI so far, potentially you know, a lot of the functions are essentially going to be baked into the cloud. So if we can figure out how to unlock that um, and iterate rapidly and use the power of the cloud to put products on the market faster, I think that'll go a long way towards really helping us uh, accelerate this change. I'm super excited about, about the prospect of what's to come. The AI, the digital assistant, uh, moving things to the cloud, rapid development, no code, low code. I mean, all of these things will just make it easy for companies like UHS to really rethink and reimagine how we're providing healthcare on behalf of our patients, our employees, and our providers. In my role, one of the biggest problems that I'm encountering every day is putting together the disparate data sources. Another problem that we're having is the on-prem solution that we put together for machine learning. It's not extensible and it's not sustainable. I'm excited that with OCI, you can turn on, you just need to, just like flipping a switch to add more power into the platform. So the potential that we see with OCI, especially from the predictive analytics space within our health system, is definitely the, the GPU and the compute power that Oracle infrastructure has. So Oracle is not just you know, a healthcare company, they're really a hyperscaler, a cloud company, which really allows us to really innovate at a, at a fast speed, because if we had to do this on-prem, then this would be not only a very expensive endeavor, but it also would, you know, take a lot of time to actually develop this. So by leveraging Oracle's cloud, it could definitely help increase our time to market. What has most excited me is OCI. Uh, just that Oracle cloud infrastructure. You know, when I see that capability and just trying to imagine how we're gonna wrap our head around that in the healthcare system to be more transparent, to be more timely, to be more cost effective. From a financial standpoint, I get really excited about that. Well, welcome back. I'm thrilled to be sitting here with Dr. Michelle Flemings, the Industry Executive Director of Healthcare, Oracle North America Cloud Infrastructure. And that is a mouthful. So hi. Hi. It is so great to meet you finally. Oh my gosh. It's like to be here. Absolutely. I mean, everything you do is inspiring. I have seen you. I have heard you. I have listened to you. And I'm so excited that you're sitting directly across from me right now. Definitely. And your title, that is a title. So tell us, like, let's just start off right there. Like, tell us a little bit about yourself, your work, why you're passionate about healthcare. Well, the title is huge, and actually there are a couple of words out of there. I am in this role responsible for being the physician strategist across Oracle Cloud Infrastructure for healthcare. I'm the clinician voice, I am the advocate for our clients, I'm the advocate also really most in my heart for our patients, because that's why we all come to work, to make it better, to drive better outcomes, to get people the care that they need. And how I got here is still probably same from that same side, being a clinician. I'm an ER doc by training. I've been a hospitalist and an ICU doc. I was a client on Cerner and the CMIO when we implemented back almost a decade ago now one of the um, Millennium Platforms at Pagosa Springs Medical Center. From there, I became even more involved with the workflows, especially around the emergency department, because efficiency is an absolute necessity in that chaotic environment. We want our int interesting results and we want our insights yesterday because patients can't wait. Today is not soon enough. From there, thankfully, when we uh, got acquired by Oracle, Cerner said, you know, we have a position for you, and I jumped. Mm -hmm. So I led then as the CMO for Community Works, 300 critical access community and specialty hospitals. And when the opportunity came to jump over to the technology side, I said, great always learning, let's do this. So 
I love that. So here we are, and you are passionate about our future in healthcare and what we're doing. And that kind of brings me to something I've heard you say before, and that is, you know, we have a greater calling and something that we have to live up to, and that's do no harm. And I think of that in terms of connecting it to now AI is in this conversation of every part of our life. It's AI that could advance, it's AI that could also also harm. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that and how AI relates to the future of healthcare, are you optimistic? Are you nervous? I'm a combination. And I'll start with the optimistic because I, I'm very hopeful, that's my default. Yes. We're gonna make this work <laughs> and it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so on the hopeful part and on the optimistic part, operational efficiency. Mm. That is something that all of our clients and customers need. That is something that the industry needs. That is something that our patients demand. So operational efficiency, utilizing the power of AI is first and foremost. And most of the conversations that we're having, and after a lot of the presentations here this week as well as at other conferences, that has been the first idea and the first ask for a use case and for partnership. After that, let's make it even more effective. Let's see how we can bring the insights and the information, make certain the information is correct. Are we giving it to the right person at the right time? Is it timely? My goal, Oracle's goal, let's get it there in near real time. That way the information is pertinent at that moment and serves the needs of everybody in the room. And again, especially the provider and that patient in the bed. Let's then jump from that and say, well, how can we also use AI to augment workflows? How can we offload some of the cognitive burden of burnout? I'm here to tell you, burnout's not new. Burnout took the lives of some of the folks that I trained with back in the 90s. And it continues, unfortunately, to be there, hanging over our heads as this just crucible. And we need to take it away. We need to take that onus off of providers. We went into healthcare to help people, to make people better, to, to promote wellness, to promote better health. We didn't go into it to be burned out. So how can we now sit down and partner with the folks at the bedside and say, how do we do this and do this better? Yeah. On the concern side, AI is not the magic wand. It's not the panacea. <laughs> A lot of folks think that you can go AI and go ping and things will just get better. It won't. We need to, now that this genie is out of the box, be very thoughtful, be very cogent about how we are going forward with this. We need to partner with others who are experts. Get the involved parties, get the physicians, the nurses, the RTs at the table. How can we help you utilizing technology to do your job better with less burden so you can get home and still have a good life and then make certain that you stay in this career that you've chosen, this passion for healthcare that you've chosen longer. Absolutely. We, we need to do that. Absolutely, so you're cautiously optimistic. Absolutely, and that is one of the coolest things about this role and one of the things that I know in my soul that we do right at Oracle is we, we will not allow a discussion of everything. Let's cone it into something that is impactful and meaningful, start there, get a win, and then build on that win. I love that. And I think on that topic of you know what Oracle does right, Oracle Health is, is going to do this right. It's something that we're all taking on, and I'm excited to see. You know, I think Oracle Health isn't just shifting the future, it's shaping the future of healthcare. And so with that in mind, are there any insights you can share with us on new product development or innovations? Oh, I will tell you. I am really psyched about the Oracle Digital Assistant. I think that that is mind-blowingly amazing. <laughs> I have stepped away from the bedside after 35 years and had this technology existed then, oh my goodness, the hours that I wouldn't have spent at work or afterwards at home with my husband going, honey, aren't you done with your notes yet? It is leveraging AI to a level now where what it can do is not just understand what I'm saying. It can take that and it can input it into the relevant portions of the EHR so my documentation's getting done while I spend time with my patient. Right. We're getting back to the sanctity and preserving that honored relationship of patient, physician, nurse, doc, all of these relationships that go into making certain that we have buy-in and we help our patients go along their health journey. It then also is smart enough to say, you know, Michelle, this patient has diabetes and it's a new diabetic. Perhaps maybe you should do a podiatrist appointment. Perhaps maybe you should make certain that they have these orders put in for their medications. Brilliant. 
Now you have the equivalent in AI of the world's best medical assistant. You've got probably a senior resident helping you and maybe even a cardiology fellow if the case is, is right. So I think that that is going to be amazing. We have already delivered at some client sites and they are receiving some fantastic results in time back at the bedside, but also time back with families. I love that clinical digital assistant, and I really think it's putting that, that human back in healthcare because it's creating that connection, giving the provider time, and giving that attention to the patient. Well, it's been a busy week at Hims, and I know that we all feel energized, and I wanna know what's been your highlight of this week? Honestly, that is a beautiful question to end with. The highlight has been being here being here with the people, being here with the persons that we meet all the time on Zoom and seeing them in person, starting to have those real conversations, those real relationships again, is amazing. Bigger than that though, I think being here in this booth with us as a stake in the ground that Oracle is not considering healthcare as a hobby. We're not dabbling, we are here. Yeah. And as you said earlier, we are here because we have decided that we need to play a role in shaping the future of healthcare. We have a big moment ahead of us, and I know that we're up to the task. That is magnificent, and I cannot wait to see where we get to in three, six, and 12 months. Some of the innovations here are going to be life-changing, not just for the providers, not just for the nurses. It's gonna be life-changing for our patients. Some of the functionality that they're going to have just in the palm of their hand to tell the machine, can you help me to schedule an appointment? Can you tell me what a colonoscopy is about? To provide that human interaction utilizing technology to get better traction, better buy-in, better engagement, to help our patients to become leaders of their healthcare team, to help guide us, to help them to make the best decisions for what they know their best life can be and their best health should be. That is an honor and I cannot wait to see how bright our future is. Well, that's fantastic. And, you know, to use your words back to you, I've heard you say before, healthcare is not a hobby. Oracle Health is here, and we're going to shape the future of healthcare. Thank you so much. We could sit down for hours and talk, but we don't have hours. In fact, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more on the comprehensive health platform. There's a lot of emphasis of the EHR with data entry clerks and how can we benefit from the EHR in a meaningful way. Our physicians in 2019 felt very strongly that the EHR was one of the main contributors of their burnout. We've been on the front lines, we're tired, we're exhausted. Burnout was there already before the pandemic started. The pandemic just pushed us to the, to, to the edge. We've been working very closely to improve uh, the efficiencies in our institution with our EHR. In order to reduce that burden, we deployed speech recognition technology at CAMH. We gave the speech recognition technology for all physicians and all learners at CAMH. You cannot rely on the physician to do all of that documentation and think it's not gonna worsen their burnout. If you reduce the, the things that frustrate me on a daily basis, I will be able to provide more time with my patients instead of being stuck behind the EHR and doing documentation. If a happy doctor equals a happy uh, environment where you can thrive and you can do do your best. The EHR is the most important tool that we use on a daily basis, but making it meaningful where you improve the quality of care for patients you, uh, you provide is what keeps us coming uh, to our hospitals and institutions, organizations to provide the best care that we provide. Welcome back to Oracle TV, and I am sitting next to Dr. Jigar Patel, who is Senior Director in Clinical Product Management at Oracle. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Shanna. And I have to tell you that your excitement is contagious. This excitement that you bring to every conversation, I, I just, I love it so much, yeah. and I get excited for what you're going to say. Thank you. I, I I love my job. I, I tell people I was perfectly trained to do this job, and so the passion is real. I get excited about the work we do, um, and so I'm in a good spot for, for doing the things I do to, every day. And I know that you've brought that here at HEMS, and you're here specifically to take part in the Interoperability Showcase. Yes, yes and so the Interoperability Showcase, um, one of the things that uh, obviously people are talking a lot more about is artificial intelligence. Yeah. And so the inter in the interoperability showcase, we're going to talk about 
the influence or how, inter how interoperability and artificial intelligence will, will work together in the future, mm. both on the front end of how do I formulate data to share, and then how do I consume data that is shared as well. Um, and artificial intelligence and the ability to use a large language model to summarize and interpret and uh, make accessible the information that there's so much of in healthcare uh, is going to be game changing. That's fantastic, and so I know that link you know, between AI and something that I think is, is an exciting piece of our future in healthcare, that's the clinical digital assistant. Right. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so Oracle Health clinical digital assistant um, was born out of, uh, prior to a, a Oracle acquiring Cerner, um, Mr. Ellison got on stage and said, we're going to voice enable the electronic medical record. And, and so the team I joined uh, took that away and came back with uh, Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant. And what they're doing with it is, it's not just voice enabling the EMR, it's allowing voice to be captured and lower the burden of documentation and other aspects of care. So we're gonna record the conversation between a doctor and a patient and uh, turn that into a note for them so we can decrease the burden, decrease the amount of time and that they're in the electronic medical record, uh, decrease the amount of documentation they do. Uh, it turns into a, an editing job as opposed to a creation job. Um, so it actually lowers their cognitive burden as well. So this is, uh, the technology is being applied in a way that can really make it easier for doctors to uh, get through their day, see their patients and, and uh, really focus on the patients as well. That, that's incredible. And what's the feedback we're getting? Are we getting any from physicians yet? Yes, we are. So we have eight clients live now, uh, about 60 providers across the United States. Uh, they're all in family medicine, internal medicine, primary care clinics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're getting some great anecdotal feedback. Uh, we had one physician say, um, uh, it's the end of my week, I have one patient left and I'm all caught up. That means I don't have to spend three hours tomorrow on Saturday finishing my, uh, my notes. Uh, we had another physician say, uh, for the first time in six months, I had lunch three times this week. Um, another got out of the clinic to go see a baseball game early. So there's a lot of uh, great life uh, experiences and other things that can be opened up, uh, improve the life of a physician, uh, decrease their burden, and really uh, make it easier for them to get through their day. Uh, it's, it's hard, medicine is taxing. Um, and, and taking care of people is hard. Um, so we're doing a little bit to, to help them make that easier. Yeah, that, that is pretty amazing to, yeah. to hear that feedback. And you know, along with the physicians, we have to you know, follow something that they do so, so closely and that's do no harm. Yeah. And so you have to believe that the clinical digital assistant is also providing an experience for the patient. Yes, and, and for the patient, it's, um, we've got other anecdotes like the doctor looked at me the whole visit. Yeah. They weren't buried behind a, a screen or they weren't turned to the screen. It's the interaction. Yeah, it was very much, and in, in, it is, the interaction is the right word because fundamentally medicine is um, an interaction in a, people share very sensitive things with physicians and they put their trust in us and to be able to push aside the technology and focus on the person that's in front of you is really what most people went into medicine to do. Um, and it's so core. And we've gotten away from that uh, in part because we, we should digitize the record, but it's also taken away from uh, the interaction. So we're getting back to a more human experience, mm -hmm. uh, which is really important as well. Yeah, it, it's it's really, you know, that, that power of eye contact between yes. a provider and a patient. Yes. I mean, that's magic, yeah. I think, right it there. Is. And we, I took a bunch of engineers to visit a client, and they were surprised at the number of times a physician actually took their PC or, the, or their laptop and pushed it aside because they knew huh. they had to interact with the person because it was very, it was a difficult conversation. It was something, um, you know, we who are trained in medicine, we do it every day, but the person in front of us, this is the only time they're going through their health condition. And so to have someone be able to relate to you um, in that moment is, means everything. Yeah. And just really, uh, it brings the humanity back to medicine a bit. Absolutely, to be seen, to be heard, to be valued. Right, I mean, correct. That's, that's, that's pretty incredible. So when you think about the evolution of the clinical digital assistant, what yes. is that? 
Yeah, so the evolution is the most exciting part, actually. Um, I don't get to talk about it a lot because we're still going through the plans and creating it, but the backbone of the future electronic medical record will have Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant at its heart. Mm -hmm. So whatever form factor you're on, whether it's your mobile device, tablet, laptop, desktop, you're gonna have voice enablement. We're gonna have AI listening to the conversation, helping you create that note. Uh, actually helping to create actions out of the conversation. So what orders does the patient need? What uh, things need to be added to the record for completeness? Um, those sorts of things we're gonna get to. And then transforming, the, the other thing that's, that's key to Oracle Clinical Digital Assistant is a, a conversational experience with the device. Um, and that will become core to the electronic record of the future as well. Uh, I've told people I, I got to come up with a better name for it because I don't think it's going to be electronic health record anymore. It's going to be something completely new and different. Um, and we got to got to get some marketing folks on helping me out to figure out what that should be. I love that. That almost feels like a challenge. Yes, so put it in is. the comments if you <laughs> have any challenge. thoughts on that. I actually love that. Yes. And so uh, just really quickly to 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 wrap this up, you mentioned that we have eight customers. Correct. What's our future look like? Yeah, so in the short term, in the next month, I have five more customers that will be uh, entering our beta program. So we're not generally available with the software yet, um, but we're uh, doing, uh, I think, a really good job of getting a lot of feedback from a lot of places uh, all across the United States um, to make sure we're meeting the needs of clinicians wherever they are. Um, we're uh, going to be generally available in uh, June time frame. Um, and then um, after that, I have to, I've started to talk to folks in the UK, in Australia, in Canada, the Middle East. So we have to think about other languages, other ways of practicing medicine, um, and how we can help them lower their uh, burden from a documentation perspective, help them focus back on the patient, um, and make that conversation more human again. Yeah. So uh, the, it, it's a very exciting time to be working here in, in this space because um, I get to talk to a lot of folks, I get to go to a lot of places, and uh, it's not just here in the United States, it's all over the world. Well, I'm here to match your hype in healthcare. It's exciting to look and to think about our future ahead as leaders in this industry. Yes, Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Patel. It has been a joy to talk with you. And we will be back with our final interview with Linda Reed from St. Joseph's Health. Central Health is a not-for-profit organization. We're based out of Central Virginia. We are a four hospital system. We oversee an area that's about 9,600 square miles, and we're quite rural and quite unique as there's not any other uh, local hospitals for about an hour in the area. When you're looking at your capacity and your throughput and you know where areas are challenged with staffing, you can really deploy your staffing based on those capacities and where those patients are going to, where they need some extra help in, that, in those areas. We were basically flying blind almost. We were utilizing a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet from probably 2004 and manually inputting that information every um, twice daily at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. That work was overseen by our administrative nursing supervisors. So sending out that information every 12 hours by the time it got to the executive leadership, it was behind, it was manual, it was often ridden with errors because it was human and it took multiple platforms to get the information. Once we onboarded and went live with the command center dashboard, we actually revamped our whole uh, safety huddle platform and how we deliver the message of our capacity and our bottlenecks and flow. Um, so daily we meet at 9.30 with the executive leadership team and we pull up that command center dashboard and it's visualized um, and it's easy to see and it creates that picture that you need and you can speak through the information, but it's there. We're able to speak to where the bottlenecks are, throughput issues that we might have for the day. So it's really changed the way we um, speak to the information, the way the information is delivered and um, the way we create our plans and move efficiently throughout the day. That information is also visualized by the team on the unit and they can see that information in real time and they know what's coming to them. They know how many discharges they have going. They know how many discharges are overall in the organization and where we're gonna need to push to get those patients up from the ED. So the command center dashboard has really streamlined the frontline leaders' ability to make decisions in real time. They are able to pull that dashboard up on their screen at any time and they're making their moves when they're seeing the patients in the ED holding and they know where they're coming to. 
They're really working on their discharge planning and getting those patients out the door earlier in the day. One of the biggest wins for us has been our length of stay. Our length of stay at one time was almost six days or 6.0. Um, we dropped it down. We are now significantly below that at four point. Our last one in August was 4.7. And when we, we've been below five all year, which our goal was 5.0. So that's, it's definitely helped with the length of stay. Well, welcome back. This is our final interview for today at HEMS, and I am so thrilled to be sitting next to Linda Reed, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer at St. Joseph's Health. Linda, thank you so much for joining us today. Very much my pleasure. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this conversation. And first of all, I have to say, I know it's a year later, but a congratulations, because last year you are a HEMS finalist for the Changemaker Health Award. That's a big it was, deal. It was, and uh, you know, I appreciate it so much. I've been in this uh, healthcare IT business a very, very long time. And it's always nice to be recognized that you can continue to make change even though you've been doing this for a long time. Well, that's fantastic and it was well-deserved. Well, thank and you, thank you. So tell us a little bit about you, a little mm -hmm. bit about St. Joseph's Health. Okay, um, so again, you know, I guess one of the reasons that I appreciate the, the change maker recognition is because I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I'm actually a nurse by background. Um, a very, very long time ago, I was asked if I would do a tiny little project, um, <laughs> which kind of it completely uh, took my career in a different direction, right? And so healthcare IT for the last 30 years, um, I've seen so much happen. Um, I've been a CIO in three different organizations, all of them very different. I've been able to do very different things in all of them, and it's always been um, just nothing but fun. Um, you know, being in the IT department, you get to do so many things every day. You know, you can do clinical, you can do nursing, you could be doing HR, you could be doing payroll. So you're never ever bored. So from that perspective, um, I think I'm a little bit of an activity junkie. <laughs> so from that perspective, I think this career really has fed that that as aspect of my personality. And I love that you said that it started from something tiny it and then it turned it into did. something it much more. It did, you know, two years in or two or three years in, the, the chief um, nursing office said officer had said, um, you know, can, can we give, can we take your job back? Can you finally move over to the IT department, right? Because I was still <laughs> in the nursing department. Um, so, but I've never looked back and it's just been a fabulous, fabulous ride. That's fantastic. And so, you know, that label, the change maker, that's gonna follow you forever. And what, yeah. what does that mean to you now as we head into this future of healthcare, which I've heard today many times, mm -hmm. it, healthcare is now. So what does that mean to you? Um, to me, being a change maker just means that you're willing to evolve. Yeah. Right. You're willing to take a look at all the new things that are coming um, and that you can speak to them because it's not all about the technology. It truly is about the people and the process that goes along with it. So working in the IT department, being a CIO is an interesting role because it's not yours to push technology on people. It's your role to collaborate with your operations colleagues and encourage them to both change their operating processes, to change culture, to get them to use the tools, to educate their staff. So it really is, it's more of a persuasion role mm -hmm. than it is a, a, you know, a mandate role. So I think from that perspective, it's understanding that there's change coming, understanding what kind of change needs to happen in the organization, and then working with people on a regular basis in your organization to ensure that they also understand it so they can move the organization along to be ready to use those tools. You know, this, that's come up so many times in conversations just, just today, and that is, you know, it, yes, it's about the technology, the evolution of AI, the, the you know, the, the clinical digital assistant, but it's about the people. It is, because, you know, when I look at a, a project, 20% is the technology, 80% is the culture, the operations, and the people. And if you don't get that 80% right, the other 20% doesn't really matter, Yeah. right? Because they're not gonna use, if it's, if it's in any way an IT project, it just doesn't work. It, the operations and, the, and my colleagues in operations have to own the ability to convince their people to work with them and to learn and to use these tools. Yeah, 
Thank you for that. You know, that kind of brings me to my next point. Our companies have had a, a long history mm -hmm. together and, you know, we have an exciting future ahead. But what has that meant to the patients and providers for that relationship mm -hmm. to continue as it has? And then even moving forward just from that, you know, as you continue to expand into this, this greater comprehensive health platform. Yeah, you know, so yes, a very, very long uh, relationship. If you think about the fact that St. Joseph's Health was also an SMS and CMS yes. customer, right? So all the way back to Envision, on through to Sorian Clinicals and Financials, and then in 2018, we were able to move on to Millennium. Um, and now our journey really is gonna move us now into Fusion Cloud with ERP and HCM and, you know, just, it's going to bring a full circle to what we do. You know, it was interesting, um, I've been an Envision customer for a very long time, but every, all of those tools were, above, were in a bubble, yep. right? So in 2018, when we were able to move to Millennium, that really gave us the first truly integrated platform where now all our physicians um, could see anything that happened to a patient, whether it was ambulatory or acute, whether there was a lab system and a pharmacy system. So they really got a really good picture of the patient. Hence, you know, you start looking at where we are today after the pandemic, trying to come out financially ahead. Um, and if you look at some of the numbers in some studies, costs have gone up, spend has gone up, savings have not necessarily gone up. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that uh, people change and we've had to get new people, people that aren't experienced. So how do you how do you drive that cost saving mm -hmm. curve up to match maybe closer to the spend? Um, and that has to do with new technologies, right? Driving more efficiencies. Um, so from that perspective, we take our Millennium tools, we're able to now attach it or integrate it, how, whatever you want to call it, to human resources, right? Acuity to human resources, great. Tie that to supply chain. You tie that into financials. So all this is going to do, it's going to, it's going to create an ecosystem that makes us so much more efficient Absolutely. that we'll be able to drive transactions faster. And it's that turnaround time that's actually going to give us those savings that we're looking for going into the future. So does that make you excited? Then it does, it yeah. does. It does make me excited. You know, and looking at the new tools, um, you know, um, just today talking to some of my Cerner colleagues, uh, Oracle Health colleagues, um, the clinical digital assistant, that's going to drive turnaround time for our physicians. We're talking about moving that same tool to nursing. It's a, it will be a great tool for nursing. Um, nursing spends so much time just putting in information. It, we're going we're gonna to see a big improvement in all those efficiencies that we need to really make uh, healthcare just so much better and just so much faster. And then if you can tie it up, if a nurse calls out and we've got HCM on the other side, it knows what kind of nurse we need. Scheduling should be able to fill that for us, right? So again, we're just looking for, we're just really excited about seeing those efficiencies that that whole ecosystem is gonna, call, is gonna bring us. Well, thank you so much. This has been a busy week for us all, and yes. I know it's been an exciting week. What's been a bright spot for you? A bright spot for me is just seeing the excitement here again. Um, you know, after the pandemic, it was really uh, difficult getting people to come back, mm. but Looking at all the people here, looking at the excitement, looking at some of the new vendors, looking at some of the great new stuff some of our more senior vendors all have. It's just very, very exciting. And just coming here always just gives you a buzz. You know, it just makes <laughs> you want to look at all this new new stuff. Um, so uh, it just it, it's just always a pleasure to be here. It's always a pleasure to be partners um, with Oracle Health. And I'm, th I'm just certain we're gonna do great things going forward. I love that. It does kind of give you a buzz. It I does. I love that energy. It does. Well, thank you so much, Linda. It's been a pleasure to talk with you today and spend more time with you. Thank you for being our partners on health and in the future and having this conversation about the comprehensive health platform that we're working on together. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, we will be right back. Thank you for staying tuned in to Oracle TV and more to come.
Well, what a day. These conversations have been so exciting, and I am sad to say that it will be my last time welcoming you back. I can hardly believe it, but that's all the time we've got here at Oracle TV at the HIMSS Global Health Conference 2024. Thanks to everyone for joining in, for dropping your comments, and telling us where you're tuning in from. If you want to learn more about Oracle Health, visit oracle.com slash health, and make sure to give us a follow, a like, or subscribe on whatever platform you're tuning in from. We've got plenty more Oracle Health content just like this. Thank you for sticking with us as we step into the future of healthcare.